Very few people know that in 1990, the late great Eazy E signed a white rapper. Not only that, she was a female, a white female rapper. She went by the name of Tari B. Little is known about Tari B. I remember being younger and seeing Eazy E hanging out with this white girl for a brief period of time. I remember a picture in a magazine or something. Fast forward to the advent of the internet and she was one of the first people I started searching for. Trying to get more detail on this white chick that Eazy E supposedly signed to his label Comptown Records, a subsidiary of Ruthless. I couldn't find anything. Even today, there is very little about the rap career of Tari B. Even the people I know in my personal life who knew Easy personally, they can tell me very little about Tari B. What do we know about her? Tari B was somehow involved in a short-lived hip-hop show titled Slammin' Rap Video Magazine, where she interviewed the likes of Schooly D and her label boss, Easy e You listen to rock and roll? Everything. Everything. What's like your Heavy favorite metal. rock band? What's like a rock band you like? Rock band. Guns and Roses. Guns and Roses? You don't have a problem with Guns and Roses? Nah. Cool. I remember the box. I remember Yon TV raps. BT. Pump it up with D Barnes. But I don't remember as a kid ever watching a show called Slammin' Rap Video Magazine. That's the name of this jam. Listen to what I'm saying. I'm trying to get an understanding. Comment down below, did anybody listening right now ever watch that show? There are several episodes on YouTube that I have since watched, and I tell you, it's a great trip down memory lane. Whenever you're feeling a little hip-hop nostalgia, go down that rabbit hole and check out some videos of Slammin' Rap Video Magazine. If you are a true old-school hip-hop fan, you won't be disappointed. Now, back to Tari B. She released her debut album, Power of a Woman, on June 12, 1990, via Comptown, Ruthless, and MCA Records, literally becoming the first white female to ever release a solo rap album. In fact, this would become the only album ever released on Easy es Comptown Records. Recording sessions took place at Audio Achievements in Torrance and Echo Sound in Los Feliz. Production was handled by Quincy Jones III, Bilal Bashir, Greg Kewen, Schooly D, and Tari B herself, who also served as executive producer. It features guest appearances from Easy e and Everlast from House of Pain. Despite gaining rather favorable reviews, it did not manage to chart on the Billboard. However, two singles, Murder She Wrote and Swingin' With T, placed themselves at 27 and 28, respectively, on the U.S. Hot Rap Singles Charts. In this era, it was customary for all of the members of N.W.A. to appear on the last song of an album by an artist affiliated with the group. The grand finale by the D.O.C., for example, was the last song Ice Cube appeared on with the rest of the members of N.W.A., the last song on Power of a Woman by Tari B was supposed to be called I Ain't Your Bitch. Ice Cube was going to write the lyrics. It would have been something along the lines of It's a Man's World from America's Most Wanted in which the members of NWA would take turns calling Tari B a bitch and then she'd go off on them in the very last verse. For some reason, she didn't like this idea. Instead, she recorded a song called Ruthless Bitch dissing N.W.A. and even other ruthless artists like J.J. Fad. She said Dre looked like a faggot when he was in World Class Wrecking Crew and accused him of lifting a lot of the samples on Straight Outta Compton from Ultimate Breaks and Beats. Dr. Dre heard the song and needless to say was none too pleased. He confronted Tari B. and her manager at a party for the 1990 Grammys. Thinking there was no way Dr. Dre would beat up a woman in front of Dick Clark, New Kids on the Block, and Janet Jackson, no less, Tari B. refused to back down. When Dr. Dre heard the track, he turned up at the awards ceremony party where he punched 
Tari twice, once in the mouth and once in the eye, allegedly. She said, he hit me like Tyson, but I took it. I don't know how. LAPD broke up the fight and took a statement from Tari B. She told them that the guy who did it was the same guy who did the song, The Police. Later, she was paid to drop the charges. She was told her album wouldn't come out if she didn't. At that point, she went back to the studio and re-recorded Ruthless Bitch to include a reference to Dr. Dre putting a shoe on her at the Grammys. Much to Easy es and Ruthless Records' displeasure, shortly after the release of her debut album, she switched up styles and decided to try her hand in the rap metal scene, forming a group called Manhole. Her subject matter touched on topics such as violence against women, racial tension, pro-choice issues, police brutality, and abusive relationships. Tari B cites Ice-T as one of her main inspirations behind taking her music in that direction around this time. She had seen Ice-T perform with his rock band Body Count and really loved the experience. She stated in an interview, Seeing Ice-T, who was a hardcore gangster rapper, rock with a heavy band backing him, spoke to me. Loudly. Easy e and Tari B parted ways shortly after this, and in fact, she was still signed to him up until just before his death when Easy let her out of her contract. Tari B is still releasing and performing metal music to this day. Her and her band have actually built up quite a cult following. I've been in my band now for 12 years in March. It'll be 12 years. Well, actually, 13 for me, but I met my husband in 2000. I started my ruin in 1999 after Manhole and Tour Santana. And um, Nick and I have, Nick who's my guitar player, we have been together for 12 years and been just doing it strong and you know, writing and recording and touring together. And you know, I think our influences are each other in our life. Tari B, what an interesting story. First and only white girl to be signed to Easy es Comptown Records. I wish she did more interviews talking about her days with Easy and Ruthless. But she probably has her own personal reasons why she doesn't. If anyone out there can get me in contact with Tari B, please shoot me a DM to my Instagram, Dusty Vision Radio. I really appreciate it. I'm at a crossroads every damn day Looking back in my past when I sleep But living on the edge now I do it enough Iniquity down to my feet What do I do when I need a little food And I gotta get the money for the rent Fall to my knees, pray to the Lord Come on son, here you give me some money, repeat